Welcome to Sugar. I'm Bob Owens, one of the developers of Sugar, what we consider to be an exciting new way to collect and analyze language samples. My partner is Stacy Pavelko, whom you'll meet in the next module. Sugar stands for Sampling Utterances and Grammatical Analysis Revised. We chose that name, especially the last word, because we began with older methods of sampling and have tried to enhance them based on what school-based speech-language pathologists do and say about sampling. That's part of the sugar story, and we'll weave it into our explanation of the sugar collection and analysis process in these modules. First, a little background. As the slide says, sugar is a quick, simple, easy, child language sample analysis, or LSA, method. Sugar begins with sample collection and then helps you not only identify children with language impairments, but aids in identifying specific areas of concern and possible intervention targets. We've based sugar on research finding about how SLPs currently sample and on what they say they need to sample more effectively and efficiently. Possibly what drew you to investigate sugar is that it's a free LSA method that requires no special software or equipment. That's the type of LSA methodology we wanted to create. You can use sugar with your laptop or tablet without downloading a program or special app. There are several advantages in using sugar. First, it's easy to learn. We'll walk you through each step. This website includes samples for practice and also helpful guides. There's no special coding or difficult procedures, as you'll see. And all of this can be accomplished using Microsoft Word on your personal computer device. Couldn't be any easier than that. In addition to sample collection ideas, Sugar enables you to quickly calculate four sugar metrics, including sugar mean length of utterance, or MLUS, total number of words, average words per sentence, and average clauses per sentence. Sugar contains normative values for each metric for children three to eight years of age that can help you in determining if a child has a possible language impairment. In addition, Sugar has sub-analysis formats to help you identify potential intervention targets. Finally, brief intervention resources give you the latest information on helpful, innovative ideas for intervention. Sugar didn't just happen. The evolution of Sugar has been a long process lasting over several years. That process is still continuing. If you'll bear with me, I'd like to give you an idea of that process to help you better understand our goals and how they came about. In 2013, Stacy, myself, Marie Ireland, and Debbie Haas Vaughan conducted a survey of 1,300 school-based SLPs and their use of LSA. These results guided our thinking in devising a sample protocol that addresses the concerns and practices of SLPs working with children with language impairment. For example, most school-based SLPs told us that they collected 50 utterances or less when language sampling. Given this reality, Stacy and I wanted to help SLPs collect the best 50 utterances possible. Previously, with the help of some wonderful students, I had conducted a sample of simple modifications we can make to language sample collecting to produce more robust samples. Again, with the help of senior students, I collected and analyzed samples from 175 typically developing three to eight year olds using the robust techniques mentioned on the previous slide. Stacy and I used this information from the children to modify MLU calculation, producing MLU sugar, or MLUS, as mentioned previously. 
In doing so, we counted bound morphemes children were adding to their language repertoire as they matured. By doing this, we demonstrated that MLU could continue to grow vigorously through age eight. One of the main concerns raised by school-based SLPs was that they doubted the validity of sample analysis values. Stacy and I were able to demonstrate that the four metrics, MLU sugar, total number of words, words per sentence, and clauses per sentence, correlated strongly with the results of normative testing. The results indicated that these four values were valid measures of children's language. Working with students, I had previously identified rapid ways to calculate each of these values. This answered another concern of school-based SLPs that sampling was too time-consuming. Subsequent research would demonstrate that using these sugar techniques, a sample could be collected, transcribed, and analyzed in under half an hour. Using the robust collection methods, modified analysis metrics, and rapid analysis methods, Stacy and I reported on sampling data from 270 typically developing three to eight year olds. This data established normative values for MLU sugar, total number of words, words per sentence, and clauses per sentence that could be used to help determine whether or not a child has a language impairment. Using data from the same children, Stacy, Denise Bambinelli, and I also identified sub-analysis procedures and values that SLPs could use in determining potential intervention targets for children with language impairment. Once these potential targets have been identified, we set about collecting information to help SLPs plan intervention. You'll find helpful information for each potential target on this website. As you can imagine, the development process has been long and at times difficult, but Stacy and I are very excited about the results and about sugar. We hope you will be also. There are eight training modules in Sugar. It's our hope that you'll spend time with each one. This is the first. As you progress through each module, you'll learn the Sugar methodology and gain an understanding of the reasons behind some of the decisions we made. It's important to understand our rationale and to follow the Sugar procedures. For example, if you don't collect a robust sample as we suggest, a child may do poorly in the analysis portion. Before I conclude this introduction, Stacy and I would be remiss if we didn't recognize the work of other professionals, both SLPs and audiologists, who have helped us along the way. Their contribution has been invaluable. Sugar is still evolving. Maybe you can help in some way. We feel our work as SLPs is important. Developing sugar has been and continues to be a labor of love for both Stacy and me, and neither of us receive any compensation. That's why sugar is available to you free of charge. Finally, before closing this module, I want to present the professional journal articles upon which sugar is based. It's anticipated that this list will grow as further research is conducted. If you're ready to have a taste of sugar, you'll find Stacy waiting for you in Module 2. Thanks for listening. We hope that sugar will leave a sweet taste in your mouth.